tell me what we're working on here. Um, we're making you a pair of earrings. Ooh, yes. <laughs> so it's using remnant fabric from a collection that I did with Ingrid Werner, a Melbourne-based fashion designer. And it's the, the actual design's called um, Eyes of My Ancestors. How do you describe your arts practice? Um, I would classify myself as a multidisciplinary artist. I use lots of different mediums within my art practice. For example, textiles, printmaking, yeah, installation, photography, sculpture, a bit of everything really. Materials, whether they're natural or found objects, really speak to me. And I guess they inspire me to create story within the works that I do. You're definitely a storyteller. What are the different elements that influence your creativity? Majority of my work is always surrounded by family, it's history, it's lost history. Motherhood comes in there, I guess, aspects of time and country as well. You know, I'm, I'm an adopted child, so it's for me, it's a way for me to be able to really investigate story. You know, natural elements within um, nature, found materials, they really become elements of things that are lost in my history as well. So I feel like they're part of the story, they're part of my connection as well. Tell me about your love for jewellery oh. and body adornment. Yes, yes, I've got a huge passion for body adornment. You know, this year we were very fortunate to be able to be a part of a program called Black Jewellery. It was working in the gold and silver smithing department at RMIT. When I was asked whether it's something that I would like to apply for, I jumped at the opportunity because I guess the idea of working with precious metals is something that I haven't ever touched before. So that was a really big drive. And I guess also to be able to fine tune my practice with jewellery making and um, to take it into another direction. What was it like being mentored by Blanche Tilden and Laura Deacon? Oh, unbelievable. What an incredible experience. Sometimes you meet people and you know you're going to kind of like move forward together. And I think mentoring Lisa was just one of those opportunities where you can come together and kind of solve the problems together. Uh, Laura would draw something out and I might get a bit of wire and go, well, that's not gonna work because look at this. And we go, and Lisa would always be watching, you know, and she'd be like, ah, oh, that's how, ah, oh, and she was really on it, you know. And then the next time you go over to see what Lisa's doing, she's doing it. Yeah, you know? she's taken that leap and kind of <laughs> she, taken it on. She got and, it straight yeah. away, she picked it up. We had these incredible jewelers that we were able to um, draw you know, inspiration from. I guess their practice is really quite varied as well with medium and, you know, it's something that I would never have used. So I think it was really important to be able to have, you know, these mentors that were able to show us what to do. Lisa mentored us as well as us mentoring her. It was, it was kind of an equal exchange because Lisa has her own long practice in lots of different fields. But the great thing about Lisa was that she was willing to park that knowledge that she was comfortable with and go somewhere new and try something different and take a risk. The accumulation of black jewellery was your latest work, Our Way. Can I get you to describe the pieces that you created? So the work that I have at the Trust is using street signs. I actually got some signs created with my own text on them. I wanted to create one piece it's got a neck piece cut out of the bracelet mm -hmm. and then within the neck piece there's a pair of earrings. So I love the idea of using a material that had no waste. It's basically talking about signs and what they represented, especially in colonial context and, you know, thinking about how a lot of Aboriginal people have been kept off their country or they've been moved historically from where they're from to other areas in Australia. And so for me, these signs are about, as opposed to one way, it's our way. So it's a redirection of these signs. So you lived in my homeland, PNG, for a bit. You were teaching over there. Tell me about the different cultures that influence the work you create. Oh, gosh. Um, I think it's been a huge inspiration for me, the time that I've spent in PNG. Um, 
married to a Papua New Guinean. All my children, my three children were all born in Papua New Guinea. So it's uh, a huge part of my life for me to be connected so greatly to that culture and, and to, you know, being a part of that um, and accepted, you know. I think we're not one without the other. We can't exist without country and, you know, it's just stories are entrenched in country and, you know, our connection to who we are and, you know, it's, it's all one. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this done today, but we can do the big reveal in the studio. Yes, I love it. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> And here's the end result. What do you reckon, folks? I love them. And let me tell you, these earrings will be in very high rotation. Applications are now open for the next Black Jewelry Mentorship Program. You can head along to the Koori Heritage Trust online for more info.